Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Anuj Chawla and today I am going to talk about x-rays in foot and ankle region. So what are x-rays? X-ray is just a two-dimensional representation of something which is three-dimensional. But if you do judicious x-ray and you know what to look for in the x-ray and you have already clinically examined the patient, you would definitely reach the diagnosis. Not just that, it helps in staging the disease and identifying the prognosis as well. Of course, it helps in guiding the treatment. More so ever, specifically with foot, foot and ankle region, we have 26 bones, 33 joints, more than hundreds of muscles, ligaments and nerves. So there are hundreds of pain generators in only foot and ankle region. So you can't really depend only upon x-rays when you are assessing the patient. So don't treat a patient just by looking at the x-ray. You always need to clinically examine the patient before you start with the x-rays. The other thing that is very important and I think it is neglected most often is that we don't do weight bearing x-rays for ankle or even foot region. So a standard x-ray for assessment for foot for any atraumatic disorder is AP and lateral weight bearing and to be combined with an oblique x-ray. However, most of the times uh, when the patient comes to us, we just do a foot AP and foot oblique, which is non weight bearing. So when we do a weight bearing x-ray, it actually gives the physiological load to the bony and the ligamentous structures of the joint and thus it helps in identifying the pathology better than when you are doing a non weight bearing x-ray so uh, it was mentioned by american orthopedic foot and ankle society way back in 2014 and this did mention that you should avoid x-ray evaluation of foot and ankle without standing in the absence of injury however i would like to go one step further even if a patient has an injury, there is a role of weight bearing x-rays in that. If a patient can stand and if there is no obvious uh, bony uh, problem or bony fractures detected, it would definitely tell you the interplay of bony and ligamentous structures. So weight bearing x-rays can also be done in traumatic settings. So these are the three standard x-rays for the ankle region so i will start off with the ankle i will talk about the bony and the soft tissue parameters in the ankle region few uh, few conditions which can be seen in the ankle x-rays and then followed by that we'll talk about the foot and finally some special views so this is the standard anteroposterior x-ray which is So this is AP in which the extra beam is uh, perpendicular to the ankle joint and the lateral is just 90 degrees of AP and then third one is the mortise view. So mortise view is done with the foot 15 degrees internally rotated. So if you look at the mortise view, you can have an idea about the whole of the ankle mortise which is this and you see that there is an overlap between the fibula and talus on the AP which you would not see in the mortise. The mortise would also help in identifying the syndesmosis and if there is any injury in the syndesmosis region. And this is the lateral view. So let's talk about syndesmosis. So what is syndesmosis? Syndesmosis is an articulation between tibia on the medial side and the fibula on the lateral side. So if you look at this joint, syndesmosis by itself is not directly anterior to posterior, but it starts from anterolateral and it goes posteromedial. So when you look at the shadow of tibia on a syndesmosis, you would realize that one shadow is more anterior 
and one which is more posterior. So how do you identify which is anterior and which is posterior? So if you look at this, now this area is anterior. And so you look at it, the tibia anteriorly that projects more laterally. And as you go posterior, it is more medial. So if you have three points here, A, B, and C. So B is the fibula and A is the posterior border of the uh, fib of the tibia and C, which is this. So this is the anterior uh, margin of the tibia. So when we talk about syndesmosis, you would find two uh, things which are being mentioned. So one is the tibiofibular clear space and second is tibiofibular overlap. So what is the tibiofibular clear space? It is the distance between A and B. So this one, this is the AP view and this is the mortise view. So if you look at the tibiofibular clear space, both on AP and on mortise view, it is less than six millimeters. And the second thing is tibiofibular overlap, which is between B and C. So this is the overlap. So of obviously the overlap will be more in the anteroposterior view as compared to the mortise view. So tibiofibular overlap is more than six millimeter on the anteroposterior view. Or if we talk about the fibula width, especially in younger patients, 42% of fibula width. So when we talk about uh, the tibiofibular overlap in the mortise view, it is normally more than one millimeter. So any discrepancy in that or any change, either increase in tibiofibular clear space or reduction in overlap, that would mean that there is a possible syndesmotic injury. So there are other uh, angles or lines that we can talk about uh, which would tell whether the fibula is shortened with respect to the tibia and you can also identify any injuries in such cases. So first of all is a telocrural angle. So one line is drawn between the tip of the lateral medullus and tip of the medial medullus and the angle is formed between this line and a line which is subtended perpendicular to the distal tibia articular surface. So this angle is the telocrural angle. This is normally 83 degrees plus minus 4 degrees. Now, if you look at the mortise view and you look at the Taylor mortise or the articular surface of Taylor, which is this, and the articular surface of fibula and tibia, which is this. So these two lines normally are parallel and if we look at the clear space medially which is between this line and this line this is normally less than four millimeters so similar to Shenton's line in the hip the some people also describe a Shenton's line of the ankle so if you look at the articular surface of fibula and then go to the articular surface of tibia so this is a continuous line. If there's a break in this line, it would suggest some form of fibula shortening. Similarly, if we draw a circle from the lateral arch of calcaneum, the circle touches the tip of the lateral medullus. So if there is any fibula shortening, shortening, it would not be touching. So by looking at all the different parameters that we just discussed, we can easily look at the injuries and classify according to that. So if you look at the first fracture, which is this one, so there's an increase in the medial clear space. There is no tibiofibular overlap and increase in tibiofibular clear space. Of course, there is an overlap between the Taylor articular surface as well as over the tibia. The patient obviously has a Weber C fracture of the distal fibula. So this is a clear cut case of ankle fracture dislocation with the syndesmotic injury. So when you fix this fracture, you just do not need to fix the fibula, but you need to address the syndesmosis and fix it as well. Once you reduce it, in all likelihood, the patient's 
uh, fibula would come back and you would see a normal tibia fibular clear space and a normal tibia fibular overlap but always look at the pre-reduction x-ray and that would tell you whether the patient needs some further repair of the syndesmosis or the deltoid ligament similarly many a cases you would see that the patient only has a syndesmotic widening with no dislocation in the ankle or no increase in medial clear space well is it just the syndesmotic injury which has happened maybe no the patient may have something which we call as mesonier fracture so there is an oblique fracture along the fibula which is sorry spiral fracture along the fibula and it is not just the fracture at the fibula or the syndesmosis the in, the injury involves the interosseous membrane so it starts from here involves the whole of interosseous membrane and it goes to the syndesmosis also if you look at the other way if suppose you get an x-ray only of this region which is the knee and maybe the upper part of the leg and you see such kind of fracture you should always look at the ankle because you don't want to miss this injury the fibula fracture does not need any intervention but the fib but the syndesmosis definitely needs some form of surgical intervention